After a disappointing end to a season in the first division, Middlesbrough are once again back in the second. And their first match at Ayrson Park, they found themselves up against the newly promoted Wolves, who were hungry to prove their success in winning the third division championship could once again be equal. Oh, goal by Slaven! Nudged on there by Pallister! And Middlesbrough take the lead in the ninth minute of this game. Beautifully executed. The corner coming across. Two Middlesbrough players let it go. See that again. Here it comes. Mowbray going in for it. Pallister it is who knocks it down. And Slaven the first to react to turn the ball past Nigel Vaughan and into the unguarded net. Side. He had the happiest of seasons last term. He scored just four goals in 24 first division appearances. Oh, what a goal that is, though! Out of the blue! It came from Mark Proctor from what? 20 yards. Hit it first time with his left foot. And Lange had no chance whatsoever. His very first goal since returning to Teesside. And a standing ovation for Mark Proctor. Set up here by Bernie Slaven. Jinx inside, takes three defenders out of the game. There's a the square ball, no messing here. First time shot from Proctor. And it nearly bursts the back of the net. Oh, that really is a long one. Much with a touch. Oh, and he scored! What a goal! Out of the blue, that one. Well, it shows you how situations can change in this game so quickly and Andrew Much celebrates his 60th league goal for Wolves and that's put them right back in the game and uh, Wolves still trail by two goals to one but this man's trying to do something about it Much, oh a good save by Paul and again, a post my word, Wolves really turning on the uh, pressure now Cross, not a bad one. Oh, there's a goal! A great cross, in fact. Peter Davenport, the scorer. So Davenport gets off the mark. There's the cross from Comfort. And Davenport at the far post just knocks it back. Dennis. Oh, Dennison. Working his way through, and the tackle comes in from Nicky Mowen, and the referee's given a penalty, I believe. Did he make contact with the man? It looked like he took the ball from here first time round, but uh, wrote that challenge from Pallister. Yes, just a little uh, nudge before the ball was taken, so a penalty for Wolverhampton Wanderers. Chance to haul themselves back in this game. Thompson scores! A fist of triumph there from Andrew Thompson. As the minutes tick away, Davenport, he rolled that challenge well. Slaven's coming up in support. Here's Slaven, he must score, and he does! Well, that surely has wrapped it up. It's been a bit of a difficult year for you two lads so far as we come towards the end of it. Has there actually been any happy memories of 1989? Uh, personally for me, uh, <laughs> not really. Uh, ever since the first day of the season I've struggled to get fitness back and it's just been one long struggle really. Um, I've been in a gym mostly with Gary, so we've kept each other company. But um, it's been yeah, each other's guts now. <laughs> 
people don't want to dwell on it too much, but really relegation was a bit of blow to the club, wasn't it? Oh, it was. No, I mean, because uh, because I thought last year we did play some attractive football, especially against the big teams and that. And a lot of people thought, well, there's no way we're going to go down. And it just shows you with the three-point system. I mean, we went to the last day and we didn't realise we could go down until after the Arsenal game. And it's such a big disappointment after playing. I mean, because it was a lot. A um, few of the players' first time in the first division. And I think they really enjoyed it. And obviously, a big game now is trying to get back as quick as possible. Well, utility man Alan Kernigan gets the opportunity to make claim to Gary Pallister's shirt after the England International's 2.3 million transfer to Manchester United. Kernigan, 22, teams up with skipper Tony Mowbray at the heart of the defence, and he will wear the number five shirt. Alan Roberts uh, coming for the short one. I think he'll send the uh, longer ball across with the uh, big men in there, Dean. Some up and under. Oh, it's in the net! Well, I thought Kevin Poole had that ball, but uh, it landed up in the net. Taken in the chest by Putney. Slaven. Slaven tries a shot. Oh, what a goal! What a goal! That's a Bernie Slaven special. Let's enjoy that one again. Takes it with a left foot. Cuts inside. Hits a screamer. Cross for Hill. Oh, it is a goal! Ian Bryson climbed above the ruck and steered his header in at the far post. again and a shot coming in there oh it's in from Ian Bryson <laughs> sent Comfort away oh beautiful clip by Comfort yes it's in brilliantly taken goal that 67 minutes gone marvellous vision by Alan Comfort Sets the home fans cheering. Sent away here, he's got plenty of space towards that. The keeper just clips it over him, executing the perfect chip shot there, and that hauls Burrow back. Parkinson's cross. Headed by Slayman. Oh, it's a great goal by Slayman. Gets the applause, but uh, full marks too for the cross. Played out wide there. And the perfect cross. And Slayman just turns it. Oh, the keeper got a hand to it. Everybody thinks, Kevin, the footballer's life's an easy one. Judging by your appearance this morning, it's a, quite an arduous one as well. Yes, it is really, yeah, but uh, it's enjoyable, and that, you know, we'd, the goalkeepers do like an extra half an hour afterwards after the lads have finished, but uh, it's really enjoyable. Looking back over 1989, it's been a year in which you've been able to establish yourself really as the first team goalkeeper. That's right, yeah, I got a chance to start off, off uh, in the first team because Stephen was injured, and uh, I've been quite pleased with the way I've been playing the, uh, the last like, eight or nine games really, and so I'm just hoping to you know, keep them going really. Building up to the Christmas period and the fans will look back over the end and have their own special memories. I think for you, possibly one game against West Ham in London. That's right, yeah, I was quite pleased the way I played, really. I started off, I made a couple of saves, so it grew in confidence and it just went from there, really. And uh, Middlesbrough beginning to get their momentum going. Putney again, good ball through to Brennan. Brennan force wide, gets a cross in, oh, and Snaven was inches away from netting that one. Good play by Mark Brennan. Comfort now. Well read by O'Driscoll. O'Driscoll. To Blissett and Blissett must score. He does. A brilliant individual effort there by Luther Blissett. His second goal of the season for the Cherries. Sent over by Gary Parkinson. Miller gets it away. Comfort. Good overlap by Proctor. 
Comfort's cross. Slaven's header is there! Slaven scored! Well, with two minutes into stoppage time, inevitably it is Bernie Slaven who pulls one back for Middlesbrough. Watch that again. Comfort. Brilliant cross this from Comfort. And in comes Slaven with his head. Makes no mistake. Glennon. Just uh, shaved the head of Morel there. But picked up by Ripley. Got round the outside. Gets a cross in. Oh, it's Slaven at the near post. So Middlesbrough putting the pressure on and turning the screw. Miller with the header. Oh, what a goal from Proctor! What a shot! Oh, no wonder he's uh, <laughs> blowing the air there. It ripped into the far corner of the net. His first goal. And how well appreciated it is by these people on the uh, stands. Of course, no one next to you, David Nish. A really smart haircut as well, David. That's isn't it? Slip eh? back. I'm going to get it finished next week. <laughs> <laughs> you obviously got the job of procuring the young talent coming up through the club. Anybody you could pick out? Well, actually, I came last year as uh, as the youth team coach, and uh, it was when Brian Little left and took over the reserves. And now I have to, I work with uh, some about four or five second year pros and four new new professionals that we've signed uh, in their second year as YTS so uh, I think it does all go well for the next few years. People have been saying that Middlesbrough have two million pounds or so in the bank but it's always good to bring your own talent through isn't it? It's, it's always that feeling that's a gut reaction from players who are born within the Middlesbrough area. Yeah I think if if you can get uh, two or, or three I think I think uh, the club has done its job you know I don't think you're, you're going to get a lot more than that but uh, I, th I think at the moment we have uh, two or three, four that we should keep an eye on. Colin, how difficult is it to bring players into the Middlesbrough area? Um, I think we've proved that, uh, that it's not a, not a problem uh, getting players uh, to come, it's getting them to, to be released by the clubs. Uh, that is the hardest uh, problem at the moment uh, because there is a lack of talent about and any, anybody that you want to go and try to sign is that clubs are not going to let them go because they can't replace them themselves. taken by David Brown. Oh, he's lost it! And kicked off the line there! Slaven, though, that's uh, perked up the Middlesbrough attack. Chance here, and it's there! Alan Comfort, his second goal for Middlesbrough. Signed from uh, Leighton Orient in the summer. The man who started his league career with Cambridge United. Bernie Slaven, Borough's leading goal scorer, the man who sends over that long cross. Beautifully taken. And first time left foot shot there. Beats David Brown. Fans wanting Borough to go forward, but uh, keeping possession and doing well. This is Brennan. Oh, what a beautiful ball through. Slaven here, shrugging off the challenges. Slaven, he scores, does he know? The ball just deflected wide. Ripley. Dean Martin closing him down. He gets it in a second attempt. Slaven. Slaven shoots and Slaven scores! 39 minutes on the clock. And Bernie Slaven slots in his seventh goal of the season. Grips with Borough at all here this evening. Oh, beautifully cut out there. Brilliant play by Parkinson. Parkinson shows. Oh! He hit the underside of the bar. Was it in? Well, uh, Slaven sends Brown tumbling. A tremendous shot from Gary Parkinson. See that again. Look at this. Thundering shot in under the bar and uh, bounced out and straight into the arms of a grateful David Brown.
exchange of passes. Putney finds his way blocked. And Dean Martin. Controlling there for Halifax Town. Oh, and the ball's gone to Slaven. A chance here. There's the chip shot. And Slaven scores. His second of the game. 62 minutes gone. It's Middlesbrough 3. Halifax Town nil. Completely unmarked. And chips Brown with ease. And that's the third time this season that Bernie Slaven has notched two goals in a game. through with the left foot and he shoots and it's a good save by David Brown Ripley sliced that one but it, uh, found his man alright Parkinson's got Putney on the right And again, can he get the cross in? He can, it's a good one, and there it is! Kerr again with the header. That's his first goal. And oh, how simple it was. He ghosted in, completely unmarked. Halifax's attention was taken by this man, Gary Parkinson. In comes the cross. And Kerr again with the simplest of headers. It's Christmas now, Colin. So obviously uh, you've got party time ahead, but really I suppose for you and the rest of the lads, it's not really a holiday, is it? No, it's something that uh, we've been used to, players get used to. Um, we have our holidays in, in July, um, but uh, it's a time for other people, uh, the festive uh, season, to enjoy. And we enjoy our time by hopefully getting results. Proctor took the kick and what a corker well he scored his first goal just watch that again beautifully placed right in the top corner and uh, poor Gavin Kelly had no chance with that one at all Ripley oh great save Magnificent save from Gavin Kelly. He's driving this ball across. And what a sensational header that was. Comfort. Nicely done. Slaven. It's on that left foot. He shoots and it's another good save by Gavin Kelly, well he blocked it well Little help from his friends there to uh, get the rebound but Bernie Slaven sends the goal there, hit it with that left foot and well blocked by Gavin Kelly OK, that was Huey Lewis in the news with the power of love Alan Kernigan, when you're not scoring goals for Middlesbrough, you generally found in the studios of Radio Cleveland, Apprentice DJ, I believe. That's right, I do a bit uh, a bit here and there. I do a few other stations as well, uh, thanks to a good friend of mine, Mark Page, who helps me out now and again. Big Borough fan, Mark Page as well. I believe he's got you involved in uh, a rather larger operation than Radio Cleveland, due respect to them, but Radio Luxembourg, I believe your dulcet tones are heard all over Europe. That's right, that's right. On a Saturday night, we do uh, a two-hour show, which goes out, as you say, all across Europe. Uh, and we have, a, we have a good laugh in two hours, really. And we also do some of the stuff for uh, the British forces as well. There's something that you would like to concentrate on more and more. Obviously, a lot of football left in you yet, but something after football, perhaps? Uh, possibly, yeah. Uh, but it's I'll, I would maybe get into something that I'd like to do myself rather than uh, when you work on the radio station, you're rather confined to what you can do, really. Uh, so I'd like to get into something where I could maybe do my own thing. Me again. Beautiful ball for Slaven. Slaven shoots more. Oh, so close. That's the uh, best effort of the game so far. 
Bernie Slaven, 10 goals he's got this season, so close to his 11th there. What a beautiful ball though from Putney. Into Slaven's path, shoots with the left foot. Just over the top. Now the red shirts come forward. Final ball, not reaching its destination. Comfort now. What can he do? Can he get around the outside of Brown and get that uh, ball across? Trying. Chips it in and a header from Slaven. Stewart with the corner. Oh, Stewart's notched. Well, they all stood off him, left in the space. Campbell. All setting up. Thomas. Oh, and he scored. Uh, Kamos is not ruled out, but it's going to be a, a hard battle, you know, if we finish up above mid-table, we'll do well. The spirit was taking a little bit of a knock, wasn't it, through relegation. Do you think the team are fighting their way back home? Huh? I'd like to think so, yeah, we had a few good results, a few wins. Hopefully keep it going and get the points that we need. As we say, Bernie, looking ahead into next year, into 1990, have you set yourself or the team indeed any targets? No, I don't think. We just go to try and be successful and uh, hopefully we can succeed. And hopefully next year, Gary is going to be better here on the injury front. I think you two lads are about the only ones who haven't suffered too many major injuries during the year. It's been it's terrible. Been I think it, you know, it hasn't been a good year really for the team. It's like an allegation. We've had a lot of injuries. Just hopefully 19 can do a better year for us. Hunter on the ball. Oh, a fingertip save from Mowbray. He hooks it back again. And off the head. Time of uh, Nicholas Bisson in the end. in his shot Bremner Cross by Wilkins Bremner's there he scored oh my word we're into a stoppage time now Tony is captain of Middlesbrough Football Club. How do you look back over the year? 
Um, dis disappointing, I would, I would think the first word that comes into mind. Um, we came into this season, everybody thinking, OK, we've been relegated. We, were, we thought we were hard done by really. I know it's, it's 38 games than it was last year, and we finished in the bottom three, so obviously we deserve to go down. But um, along the way, we had a lot of bad fortune, um, games that we could have won. And towards the end of the season, you're looking at games like Aston Villa, where we were sort of you know, denied um, three points, last last kick of the game. Um, and you look at all the little daft individual goals that we lost, and, which could have kept us up, and it was that close. But um, as I say, second division, we approached it thinking that we were going to bounce straight back, have a great year. And I think the fans felt the same. Everybody approached the season with a lot of enthusiasm. Um, but it hasn't turned out that way. Um, it was a long time people have been saying, oh, it's just a bad start, it's just a bad start, we'll be all right, we'll pull through it. And the bad start turned into a bad three months, three and a half months. And um, hopefully we've, we've turned that corner with the result of Blackburn. Um, a win against um, whoever we played today, Oxford. <laughs> Pull that one out of the bag. Um, but as I say, I mean, hopefully we can pick up a few points now because. Uh, three points for the win, you can soon start climbing the table. And um, I remember Millwall did it in our promotion year, they came from nowhere and uh, romped home. So hopefully if we can sort of stay out the limelight and take the new year, keep it picking points in the last few months, maybe come with a late run. It is important though that Middlesbrough Football Club doesn't really just remain at Ayrson Park, but it gets out and about amongst the community. I don't think you do a little bit of work as well for the Junior Reds. Yeah, I'm uh, chairman of the Middlesbrough Junior Reds and I enjoy coming down here to take care of the kids and train them and uh, have a bit of fun with them. And it's important that you know the general public is involved within the club um, because they are the people who pay the wages at the end of the day. Do you ever get fed up a little bit of football? They're asked to do youth work, playing football non-stop? Not really, because I mean it's part and parcel of it and you become you accept it as part of the game. Uh, it's nice to be for people to recognise you and uh, when, when these things you don't get asked to these things, you know that uh, things aren't going so well, you see. Foot. Oh, and a good shot, and that's a corner. That uh, nearly took Stuart Naylor by surprise. Cooper tries the right foot shot. Oh, and it was a cracker. Really hit that well, did Cooper. See that again. He turns onto that right foot. Just makes the space for himself. Hits a screecher. And a good save by Stuart Naylor. Ripley's there, sends it across, oh and a good save, and another one, Saylor's got it in, but it's not going to count. There we are, Tolbert gets it forward for West Bromwich Albion, Mowbray with a header, oh and he didn't get it away, and uh, Kevin Poole had to come rushing from his line there, nearly uh, at risk, oh and a good save from Kevin Poole. Bray's header, getting a pool into trouble there. Brave goalkeeping from him, and he recovers quickly enough to uh, make the save from this shot from Ford. That's a mighty throw. Oh, off the bar. 
My word, wind assisted it was, but what a throw that was. It certainly nearly caught uh, the Borough defence out. Look at the length of this throw. And it came off the head of Mowbray and then whacked off the line. Play that by Mark Brennan. Come, uh, Slaven. Slaven with the left foot. Can't quite get it across, but Butter still in possession. This is Brennan. Good ball. Proctor. A chance here. Oh, and he's missed it. Well, you'd have put money on Trevor Putney burying that shot. Cross. To Bernie Slaven just couldn't get a comfort shot. Just past the post. Slaven. Setting up slate. Uh, Stuart Ripley. Bad miss there. Oh, and he hesitated. Comfort with a shot. That's the return ball, but uh, Proctor going on his own. Tries the shot. Oh! Inches away there. Beautiful ball through for Ripley. Ripley in, in with a chance here. Oh, he, another one. And he hits it straight against the keeper. Simon, so, mean, this time last year you were with Mansfield. Now we're with Middlesbrough. What's the differences you've noticed between the two clubs? Uh, crowds for a start. You know, there's a lot more atmosphere and everything. So it's a bit, it's a bit different that way. And then just pressure. There's more pressure. Well, not pressure, you know. You've got to perform every week to the best of your ability. So The crowds in Middlesbrough have been remarkably patient. You obviously haven't seen too much of the, the good or bad times for Middlesbrough so far, but obviously you're hoping to make an impression on them and become one of the crowd favourites. Well, it's uh, any club you go to, really, you, you know, you just got to play your best and hopefully the crowd will take to you, especially when they've paid money for you. You know, you go somewhere, your first impressions last, so hopefully just keep going and do all right. Will I be right in saying this will be your first Christmas away from home? Yeah, it will be, yeah. yeah. Daunting prospect? Uh, a bit, a bit different, but I think well, I'm 21 now, ready to get away from home, so I've got to make a move sometime. And in football, you've got to move about, so... You ready to make a movie? See, your mother's cooking isn't that bad, surely, is it? It's <laughs> all right, yeah. <laughs> not, not too bad. <laughs> scores in the third minute to give Newcastle a marvellous opening here. Middlesbrough, comfort with a throw. This is Ripley. Does well. Putney to Slave and it's there! Oh no, the flag's up! The flag's up! Parkinson. Ripley. Oh, he's done it again and got the cross in. It was uh, Christensen who got it away. Oh, what a shot! Proctor, the scorer. And he really buried that in the only place that Burridge couldn't get to. 24 minutes gone, and it's Newcastle United 1, Middlesbrough 1. But uh, look at this turn by Ripley. He's getting the better of Scott here this afternoon. Brock can't take it cleanly on the chest. Well won here by Proctor. And the finish is supreme. Dylan remarkably signed on a free transfer from Portsmouth in the summer. Scott with a flick and Quinn. Oh, blocked on the line. Blocked on the line there by Mark Brennan. on the left, this is Slaven. Comfort drives it across. Brennan with a shot, he scored! Mark Brennan shoots Middlesbrough into the lead here, just two minutes into the second half. Slaven here working the, the ball to Comfort, drives it across. Scott it was who got his foot to it. And uh, Christensen just 
a yard short of reaching that ball. Now Mark Brennan to uh, power the shot in. Off the head of Parkinson. He's really living dangerously here. McGee trying to force his way through. Oh, it's there! From the substitute, Liam O'Brien. Just five minutes left for play. You see that ball came off the head of Parkinson. That's to no man's land there. I think they're expecting a shot. Brock turns it across. No Gray it was who got it away, but not too convincingly. Back in again from uh, the head of O'Brien and O'Brien then runs forward as McGee tries to force his way through and the ball comes out and it's O'Brien who slots it in for everybody watching Colin it's Christmas time party time stuff in the first is full of turkey and probably drinking too much as well but uh, footballers can't do any of that can they no, we, we get our holiday um, at the end of the season, July. Um, but we hope to get our uh, festive or uh, into this festive spirit by winning games. Um, I mean, it's something that we've come, come uh, used to as players and as coaches to adapt that we know that we, we can't enjoy the, the spirit of Christmas. Um, so let's hope that we, we do win our games. How are you going to convince Alan Comfort he can't enjoy the spirit of Christmas? He's a born-again Christian, Colin, you know that? Well, we know that, but I think it's something uh, you better ask Alan when you uh, speak to him, and he'll give you a good answer on that. <laughs> Christmas, to most people, is just a, a good excuse for a, a holiday and a, a good time. Uh, a footballer's life is slightly different to that, so a lot of footballers would tell you that uh, it, Christmas is not that great for them uh, because they can't really enjoy it. And plus, for me... Christmas is the special time of year because it is the birth of Christ uh, and a lot of people miss that point in Christmas now, you miss, you miss the idea of present giving and uh, going out for a drink and all that kind of thing, where it, it, it signifies the birth of Christ, the Son of God.
Um, well, results have not been as well as one would expect, but uh, apart from that, um, we have felt it a wee bit, but uh, nothing that has uh, put us off our stride. I mean, our aim is to, to get results, and we proved uh, against Blackburn uh, that we are capable of doing that. Now, Bruce has always said, hasn't he, that it would take five years for him coming to the club to get the club into some sort of shape that he would like. Progressing along those lines? Well, um, from the early days, we went, as you know, from the third to the second to the first. Um, I had a little hiccup to come back down into the second, but um, it might be fair to say that we've probably progressed too quick. Um, and we didn't have the resources to, to keep us up there. Uh, now we're back in the second. Uh, we've got to build on that and uh, possibly write what Bruce uh, said that it, it probably would take us five years and now we're in a position where we are rebuilding again. Mowbray. Keane wrote the challenge well, oh, beautiful play by Keane, he's got Ward to the right, Slater rushing through, that's who he's aiming for, Slater must score, and Slater scores! Oh, what a delightful goal! A change of direction there by Liam Brady. This is Ward. And the shot coming in. Oh, and a great save. The shot from Slater. The save from Poole. This is Putney. Play on, says the referee. Proctor with a chance. And just wide of the far post. Kevin Keane nipping in here. He's got to Ward to the left. That's a good ball into space. Slater racing through the middle. Ward goes for the shot and look, just palmed away there by Kevin Paul. Dix picks it up. Slater taking on Parkinson. Gets the cross into Brady. Brady tries the shot. Oh, and a magnificent save! What a marvellous shot though from Liam Brady. He bows his head. That uh, first goal of this season just won't come, will it? Liam Brady. This is his 69th league appearance for the Hammers. So it's Julian Dix against Kevin Poole. 59 and a half minutes of this game gone. And Dix this fly. Oh, blasted in in true Ray Stewart fashion. Kevin Poole, no chance at all. So. 2 0 it is to the Hammers. This is Bowen. Giving the ball away again. Looking for uh, giving the ball away quite a lot now. Slater able to expose them with his pace. Now he tries the shot and again denied by Kevin Poole. Dix. Dix is going to try the shot and is deflected. And well saved by uh, Kevin Poole. Well, Kevin Poole, certainly the uh, hero of this Middlesbrough side here this afternoon. He's brought off a string of great saves. And that one uh, was deflected. It wasn't easy for him to deal with. Nolan's long uh, clearance. Foster's header. Slaven now. Tries the shot. That's a good one. And oh, he's at the post too. And that was that over. No, it wasn't, said the linesman. Safe on the line from Kernigan. So Phil Parks can breathe again. My word, they've hit the post twice in the last five minutes. The goalkeeper's position, key part of the defence. Unfortunately, during the early part of the second division campaign, leaking in a few goals. Do you think they've now managed to establish yourselves a bit? Yeah, I think so. We started off we had a dodgy, you know, a dodgy, dodgy period, but uh, I think the last few few games we started to put like a bit, bit of play together, and uh, we looked quite solid at that now, really. Christmas is often a difficult time for the footballers, being away from families. Do you just accept it as being part of the job? Oh, that's right. It's part of the job. Yeah, you just have to accept it. Yeah, yeah. put the family in, like second place, really. <laughs> and have you any ambitions looking ahead to the new year, 1990? Just to keep going, you know, keep the first team place and uh, just keep playing well, really. And during the latter part of 1990, getting back to the ground such as Anfield and Old Trafford, they have a certain ring about them, don't they? That's right, yeah. Create a great atmosphere. They just hopefully get back there, really.
Talking about a lot of changes, you've been changed around a lot yourself. You were substitute for the best part of last season. Mm -hmm. This season you've been centre-half and centre-forward. Which do you prefer? Uh, well, I prefer not being the judge anyway. They used to call me the judge because I sat on the bench all the time. Uh, I prefer playing up front because basically because if you score you get a little bit of glory and I think everybody in life likes a bit of glory you know likes to be famous for 15 minutes uh, but uh, after Gary left I'd, uh, I'd started to settle in, in the defence and started to enjoy it uh, more than I thought I would do actually uh, but now this chance has come along to play up front so I'm going to try and take that Do you see yourself more of a forward than a defender? Uh, I think so yeah but a lot of people don't <laughs> <laughs> It's a bit of a difficult life being a striker for Middlesbrough. Not really so far in the second division. Managed too much in the goal sticks. Yeah, that's right. Things haven't just gone in for me. Uh, but rather, you know, if someone else is scoring and I'm creating as a centre forward, then I'm quite happy. You know, I mean, you had you should score goals as centre forward, and you've got to take responsibility for that. But uh, hopefully, I can get on the mark sooner or later. <laughs> the press gets blamed sometimes for hyping up certain things. There was. A certain talk in the press that you mightn't have been too happy here at Essen Park. Yeah, there was one or two uh, misdemeanours between myself and the uh, management, but you know they've been ironed out virtually, and uh, I'm, I'll always be happy to play for Middlesbrough as long as you know you're treated correctly. The safer for local lads is often a special thing to play for your own team. Were Middlesbrough always your favourites? Oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, I stood on the whole gate and shouted and screamed at the players in my own time, you know, and. Uh, I've always wanted to be a Middlesbrough footballer and it was an honour to be one really. And Peter Davenport who switched to this right hand side now. Nice head down for Slavin. Can he find space for the shot? He turns. Well, just too many Wolves players there, but the shot may still be on. Well, Slavin doing well. Hopefully the second half won't be too monotonous and it's inside. Can Cook find time for the shot? He does! Beautiful finish. Cook with his first goal for Wolves. He tricks his way free. He's having his shirt pulled by Coleman, but he keeps going. And will he get the penalty? Yes, the referee has awarded it. Well, I think Denison had turned the Borough defence so many ways they weren't sure which way he was going to go. I think he can count himself a little fortunate to have won that penalty there. The challenge seemed innocuous enough, but the Northern Ireland international went down. And Mr. Bucks had no hesitation in pointing at the spot. Now it'll be up to Andy Thompson, the Wolves number seven, to see if he can add to the first goal 
by Paul Cook. It's the referee, Mr. Bucks, warns him not to encroach, and Thompson it'll be against Paul. And he slots it home, 2-0 to Wolves. Concentrating now on Middlesbrough's 1989 draws to a close. Any message for the fans? They've remained incredibly loyal. Yeah, smashing. Um, all I can say really is that, I mean, the lads go out every week, home and away, and, and, and try and give 100% and, and try and get results from us as a football club. And, uh, and for the fans, if we're away, we, we realise they're sadly on missing the radios and, and hoping that we do well. We try and do well for them. Um, just 89 wasn't the best of years for us, but all we can do is, is go out in 19, 1990 and, and keep doing our best and hope we get the breaks, hope we get a bit of luck. Um, hope the ball goes our way and, and you know you never know what might happen.